Hi, welcome to another one of my Scratch projects. You can see that uh, this is a script for a shooter. It lets you charge up your shots. So you can fire little ones or big ones. Um, so what, look at this variable. Uh, right now it's on zero because there's no fireballs. And you can see that when the fireball hits the edge of the screen, it goes to zero again. Let's see what happens with three fireballs. See that one? Three, two, one, zero. So this makes it so that I can't, no matter how many times I press, have more than three fireballs on the screen. This variable gets used three times, like this over here. And in the script for the fireball over here. So if I were to take that out, just take that out right there, and take that out right here. Now I can have as many fireballs as I want. You can see that variable can also go up super high. It looks like up to nine fireballs is the maximum. Um, okay, another interesting feature of this script is this if keyspace pressed, wait until not keyspace pressed. Basically, this is for when the space bar is pressed down, and this one is when you let it up. Let me show you what that looks like. So, space bar is down, you can see that he's in his fire position. I let it up, and there goes a really big fireball. Um, let's put this back. And um, come over here. You can see here there's the same key space pressed, wait until not key space pressed. This just makes sure that the fireball is coordinated with the, uh, the, the, the sword action of Little Elf. Uh, something else that's really interesting is this timer value. So um, if I come over, oh wait, actually let me show you how to reset it. So there's this reset timer here. So let me show you what that does. Um, you can see that here's the timer variable. Um, if I press reset timer, it goes to zero. Reset timer, it goes to zero. And uh, yeah, there's the hide and show timer uh, checkbox. So anyway, let me explain to you what this does. So basically, when the key space is pressed, it resets the timer, and then it waits here. So you press the spacebar key, and then it waits, 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 waits. The timer value gets really big until you let it up. And um, okay, I thought that a really big fireball was going to come racing across the screen. I guess it's possible for the fireball to get so big. See if I let this timer get up to like six or something. Yeah, it gets so big that it hits the bottom of the screen. I think if you let this get up to like uh, four, yeah, any bigger than that, it would hit the screen. So um, another interesting feature is uh, this little script. So the reason that I did this, this is actually not totally necessary. I could have it like that and watch. Oh, well, I guess it does prevent you from having really tiny fireballs like that, bullet fireballs. But um, you know, I can still have big fireballs. I can still have medium fireballs, and, and I can have little fireballs. But uh, this just makes sure that um, the fireball power, this variable, fireball power, is always set to a whole number. So look, here's fireball power. See, before, uh, when we took out the round and the plus 0.5, uh, it was set to a small decimal value. But back the way that I had it, it's always a whole number. One, two, three, can go up to four. If I let it charge, four actually can go up to five, I think, and still fit on the screen. Oh, yeah, five any bigger and it would go off the screen. Uh, okay, well one more thing that I guess I can show you is actually two more things. Uh, so here's, here's this, this bit right here. 
sets the fireball to a certain size. Uh, if I take that out and uh, set that to 100%, you'll see that no matter what I do, the fireball is always the same size. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this bit actually makes the fireball flicker. So if I break that, um, watch what happens. You'll see the fireball just looks like a car going across the screen. It doesn't flicker or anything. So this is really useful. It makes it flicker. Let me show you what this does. So this is the collision script. If it's touching the edge, you know, or you could change this, you know, put it in another sprite and make it so it's if touching the sprite. Uh, but anyway, without that, fireball gets created and it's not destroyed. Big fireball. Oh, still can't go off the edge. Not without this script. Um, yeah, something else that you need to know is that here's the bits. Whenever you create a clone, create a new fireball, you need to change the fireballs on screen by one. And then you need to change the fireballs on screen by negative one when you delete it. And something that screwed me up was, uh, oh, that, that could screw me up, is that the fireballs on screen needs to be reset to zero. Otherwise, you can, you know, get into some funny situations. For instance, if I, um, here, if I set the fireballs on screen to five, oops, boom, okay, you saw that number go to five. Um, and now watch what happens. Yeah, I can't even move my sword. Um, anyway, uh, I hope that's something fun that you can use in uh, your shooter games. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.